Hello and welcome to a special Thanksgiving Day episode of Proto Balls Talk. I'm Proto Met. I am a drunk, my recycled balls. He he ha is currently drinking. <laughs> I am currently drinking. Um, if you hear a uh, Seagram's Escape Strawberry Daiquiri. If you hear a, a weird noise in the background, it's because I've got a humidifier to uh, humidify the place. So. And we're going to kill it with fire the next time it comes on. You hear that, you little bitch? It, it literally just shut off before we hit record, so... <laughs> yeah, we, we, we were probably waiting for it. So, uh, what, uh, how's it going? It's uh, been, going. It's been a, been a bit. Been a a bit. Little, not too long. It's, it's been a month since I last streamed. I did stream last night. But that's not uh, why we're here. No, that's of course not why we're here. But you know, you know, having a little friendly conversation, you know, you know. You're just trying to delay the inevitable, aren't you? I, 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 I am. Two thousand eight, <laughs> Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Fuck. Let's not let's... talk about it. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> Actually, okay, it's an interesting movie. If, if only because it's not good. It's, it's, uh, okay. Here we go. Allow me to, uh, allow me to put it into my own words as best I can. As he looks at Wikipedia. All right. Oh, no, you spoiled, you spoiled the joke here. All right. Actually, in my own words, Indiana Jones and the King of the Crystal Skull is a 2008 action-adventure film directed by Steven Spielberg in the fourth installment of the Indiana Jones series. Released 19 years after the previous film, the film is set in 1957, pending Indiana Jones against Soviet agents led by Irina Spalko. Uh, searching for a telepathic crystal skull. Jones is aided by his former lover, Marion Ravenwood, and their blah, 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 blah. Okay. You got that? All right, good. So anyway, five out of ten would not recommend. All right, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's uh, yeah. So uh, Harrison Ford's back. Uh, yep. Kate Blanchett's playing the villain, which is an interesting decision. I'm not against it, but like, so as I mentioned, the the, the film was set in 1957. So instead of Nazis, you get Russians, and it's just like, eh, you know, it's like. Yeah, but, like, Russians aren't nearly as bad as Nazis, okay? Sorry that I gotta tell everybody... Okay, I Sorry that I gotta tell everybody the truth. Stalin is worse than Hitler, but Russians are not as bad as Nazis. Let, let's get that out of here. Okay? Okay? Do we got that squared away? Good. And now you understand the principal problems with this film. It doesn't have interesting villains. Yeah, really the only reason why this has uh, uh, communists as the villains is simply because... 50s! They had to explain, get, give a decent explanation for why Indiana Jones is now so much older than he was in the previous movies. Right. Due to, you know, this movie coming out like almost 30 years after the previous one. I think, of course... We we can't we can't also talk about this film without talking about uh, one of the biggest problems people has with this film, and that is Shia LaBeouf. He's in this movie, and he's fine. I don't know what people are complaining about. He lacks range. That's that's well, that's probably Spielberg's fault for picking him. Then he's fine. He he's an okay actor. It's just that. He's not the meme. Oh, he's not. He's not the meme machine he would become at this point. Yeah, at, at this point in his career, it's just like just after even Steven. So, uh, just about everything that I've either seen or heard him in at the, around this point is basically him playing the same character with the same personality, even if the characters are supposed to have different personalities. He's. It's just the way he p portrays the characters are just the same. <laughs> well, let's just let's just let's just get into it. Yeah. Uh so the movie starts with uh, a drag race. <laughs> kind of drag race. You explain this while I go uh <laughs> do something. Get drunk? Yeah. <laughs> while I get drunk. 
So, um, <laughs> a military convoy is head is traveling through the desert, and a group of teens in a in a vehicle of the fifties decide to, uh, to go up to the lead car and uh, basically race them. <laughs> and that's really all there is to it. Like nothing happens outside of the fact that they're racing for a bit. <laughs> And then they stop for some reason. And uh, then the uh, the military convoy turns into a uh, turns into a uh, area that is within the vicinity of a bomb testing range. And they are told right out that they are that despite the high ranking. Of the guy in charge of the convoy. They're not allowed in. They're not allowed in. At which point, he's just like, All right, boys. <laughs> kills so them. then the convoy kills the guards and just go in. <laughs> anyway. So yeah, it turns out these guys are uh, Soviets. <laughs> and uh, so they're brought to, uh, they're brought to a uh, storage facility. Named Hangar 51. Yeah. 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 First indication that uh, something's weird with this movie. <laughs> let's not. You know what? No, let's let's not even just keep it up in the air. This movie's got aliens. <laughs> yeah, th this movie's about aliens. And, like, I get it. <laughs> but at the same time, no, it's <laughs> dumb. Like, all of the previous movies have had some religious or spiritual my aspect theory, to them. My theory is, okay, and this is just my theory is, my theory is, is that Steven Spielberg and co. did not want to do Islam. <laughs> and we're just like, we should do something else. Uh, aliens! Yeah, that, that's where it gets the 50s. Because, uh, you know, nothing has ever gone wrong from people attempting to interpret Islam. Uh, this was 2008, by the way. <laughs> this was 2008, by the way. This is right at the height of the Iraq and Afghanistan war. Which are still going on, mind you, today. God damn. Um, Longest war that the United States has been a part of. Wow. And what has it amounted to? Fucking nothing. That's, that's, that's my po po political rant for the day. Um, my point of view is that since the... Early Indiana Jones movies were kind of uh, homages to uh, adventure right. serials. Right, this one's supposed to be an homage to sci-fi films, but it doesn't not... Which were big at the time that this movie is set. <sighs> but this one does not do it well. No. <laughs> because this movie basically tries this, to... This, honestly, might be... Uh, okay, it's b between this and Lost World Jurassic Park. This might be Steven Spielberg's worst work. You take that back. Lost World wasn't that bad. No, 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 no. Lost World was bad. Lost World was boring. It was bloated. The dialogue was terrible. The the, the characters are holier than thou are actually the worst people in the movie. I'm sorry. I got problems with Lost World. That that might be a point of debate for later. Okay. I I think it's not a good movie. <sighs> I'm but uh, tired <laughs> for some reason. But no, because we just ate. We could just ate Thanksgiving turkey. Oh, that that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, like no disrespect to Steven Spielberg because he's a great director, and I, I, I don't, I won't say he's made a bad film. He's made underwhelming films, and that's what this. That's what Indiana Jones: Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And, and Lost World are. They're very underwhelming. Even so, yeah, it's an adventure movie with aliens, which just, you know, it could work, if not for the I could see it working. It just did not work here. Uh, I, I think part of the reason why it just doesn't feel like it works here is because the previous movies have had spiritual and religious elements, and then this one just, like, hard sci-fi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but still an adventure movie. That still has elements of, like, the spiritual of aspect. Historia, of historiosity. Yeah. But aliens. <laughs> so, yeah, they're at Hangar 51. Uh, Indiana Jones and his partner, Mac, 
George. So apparently they've had a previous adventure. Uh, that's what I gotta say about that. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, they they brought to Hangar Fifty One, and uh, for those of you who are wondering, yes, it, the, this particular hangar is also a reference to an earlier film. As uh, we end up learning that this is the hangar where the uh, Holy Grail is being not the Holy, not the Holy Grail, well, the, 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 the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> We get a glimpse of that in one of the boxes. Nobody else sees it. It's solely for the audience. It's like, okay. I had a nice teaser. Uh-huh. But, uh, yeah, so a fight breaks out, and apparently uh, apparently Mac is a turncoat. That's kind of jumping ahead a bit, but, yeah. Yeah. Bas- basically what happens is that uh, Indy and Mac were brought here because they had previous experience with a mysterious sarcophagus. Which, you know, given that they had experience with this sarcophagus, they would know what's inside, and they kind of act like they don't. <laughs> it, it, it seems like the Soviets know what's inside it, and Indy doesn't. <laughs> That's kind of how it feels to me. All Indy knows is that the sarc- this mysterious sarcophagus is super magnetic, and so he takes, like, some gunpowder, which has metal in it, and, like, tosses it in the air... Gunpowder gets goes off in one direction. Like, uh, Super magnets, whatever. <laughs> no, like, but that doesn't even make sense. This is another problem with the movie. The the whole magnetism work. Whole magnetism is like flipping the switch. It works when it wants to, and it works when it doesn't. Because like he holds the gunpowder in his hand, and it, and they're not like floating away. For they're not sinking out of his hand and floating through the thing. But when he throws it up, it goes. It's so stupid. This is stupid. I have major problems with this movie <laughs> right away. So yeah, using gunpowder and shotgun shells, they find uh, this metal sarcophagus, which uh, they open up, and the psychic lady, who who really just gets introduced at this point with her rapier, uh, she opens it up and finds an alien body inside. So yeah, alien. Aliens. <laughs> fuck! Fuck this movie. Another problem I have with this movie is that uh, there's a scene later on where they where they reveal that yes, the contents of the sarcophagus were an alien, and yet later on in the movie they're surprised when it turns out they're aliens. Good God! Yeah, it's like the audience is fully aware that there are aliens. It's not like the filmmakers are trying to hide it. And yet the characters somehow act surprised when they find find out that they're aliens. So yeah, so they try so they try to take the sarcophagus, but it fails because Indiana Jones does what Indiana Jones does and completely fuck with everybody. And Indy uh, manages to flee the Soviets. The Soviets manage to get away with the sarcophagus, which is not even important for the remainder of the movie. No, no, <laughs> like, they, they failed to get the body. That's the important part. They didn't get the body. Except that they have the body. Right. Like, it, it, whatever. It's like, th- there seems to be no actual point for them to to try and get the sarcophagus when they seem to already know what it is they're after. The sarcophagus just really feels like it's something for them to collect or something? I don't know. Maybe maybe they were expecting that uh, by opening it they'd... Uh... <laughs> like, no, listen, like, listen to this description here. It's so stupid. Like, okay, here we go. In 1957, Indiana Jones and his partner George Mac Mihail have been kidnapped from their archaeological excavating work in Mexico by Soviet agents working under Irina Espalco, who infiltrate a secret governmental Nevada warehouse labeled a Hangar 51 and force Jones to lo- locate a mummified corpse from the Roswell UFO incident 10 years earlier on which he was forced to work. That is barely ever brought up. And almost never... I didn't even realize that it was from Roswell. Yeah, and never brought up again. <laughs> it's brought up once later on, and really only as a revelation of, yes, they're aliens. So only for the characters to then later on be shocked that it turns out it's aliens. So long story short, long story short, okay? Indiana escapes, and he makes it to town. A hey. town. <laughs> He rushes in, the family inside are watching Howdy Dude. He tries to get their attention. They're mannequins. Um, this isn't a real town. This is a nuke town. <laughs> <laughs> we, 
Which uh, then raises the question of, why would they have the TV on? Like, they're going to bomb the place. Why do they have the TV on? I don't know. Dude, are you asking questions in a movie like this? Yes! God damn it. You're doing the same thing. (laughs) You're right. I'm sorry. So, once Indy realizes that it's Nuketown and the nuke's about to drop, he's like, oh, God, I gotta get out of here. Hey, Sophie, take me with... Oh, you guys just left. (laughs) Okay. You came here trying to get me. I want to go with you. And you just leave me behind. Okay, whatever. Um, Fridge! (laughs) Now, admittedly, the fridge does say that it's lead-lined, which uh, doesn't really uh, change the fact that... uh, it shouldn't have survived the bl- the blast. <laughs> this this is actually like the biggest problem that people have with the film. This scene in particular, where Indiana Jones survives the nuclear blast because he gets into a lead lined fridge, and the fridge looks fine when it lands. A bit scuffed up, but no worse for wear. Otherwise. Despite the fact that the thing was only lead lined, it wasn't made entirely out of lead. Yeah. Uh, this it, it's, this movie's dumb. Oh, man. This movie is and dumb. And then, then somebody makes a quip about, you know, getting inside of a fridge is dangerous. I... But, anyways... A- anyway, Indy gets... Indy's, Indy, gets, Indy gets kidnapped by the FBI now. <laughs> Taken in by the FBI. He gets a scrub down because, you know, radiation and whatever... And, and then, like, questioned by agents who basically have to back off when some other government official comes in to vouch for Indy. Yeah, they're... they're the uh, FBI like, are kind of assholes in this movie. The, the FBI the fuck, are fucking terrible. They're like, hey, your buddy turned coat. Maybe you're Tim Crote, too. And he's like, they left me behind! What the fuck are you talking about? We were kidnapped! You fucking assholes! And yeah, and the agent comes in and he's like, dude, this guy fought fucking Nazis, okay? He's an Ameri- he's a real American hero, like G.I. Joe. Fuck, 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 fuck this movie. God, ah, uh, you're gonna hear that a lot in this review. And then the FBI have no presence throughout the entire remainder well, of the Well, they, they have little presence for like the next few scenes, but that's it. <laughs> but, uh, so, so then Andy's teaching in class. And then the dean comes in and basically tells him, "Yeah, Indy, um, uh, you gotta go on a indefinite hiatus from this school because of the whole um, communist thing you were just you, involved in." Mind you, mind you, um, now, Indy is understandably now, my, upset. <laughs> I was gonna say, mind you, it is not uh, not played by. Uh, it, <sighs> Marcus Brody is not in this movie. The actor who played him had unfortunately passed away like a year after uh like a year or two after holy grail came out and uh last crusade last uh, yes last crusade i'm sorry what did i say you said holy grail (laughs) i mean i understand why uh, last crusade yeah well after last crusade came out and uh sean connery's not in this movie because he said fuck this to acting after 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 league of extraordinary gentlemen which was the biggest mistake of his career because he could have been Gandalf. Think about that. <laughs> Sean Connery could have been Gandalf. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the Dean basically tells Indy that I was able to prevent you from being fired outright, but at the cost of my job. So they're at Indy's place commiserating, and that this is the scene where we learn that Brody and uh, Indy's dad are Passed away. Dead. Yeah, passed away. And this is... Um, this is a scene that... Uh, this is the best scene in the movie, <laughs> honestly. This is a scene that honestly reminds me of a complaint that I had heard somebody have about the newest uh, Bill and Ted movie. The which, which is basically, this movie just highlights the fact that clearly there wasn't an actual happy ending at the end of the previous movie. You may think like it was a happy ending and everything rode off into the sunset and then this... Just comes in to remind you, yeah, no, no happy ending. Life is still terrible. <laughs> uh, it's like, uh. 
But, uh, yeah, but this, this is easily, like, the best scene in the entire movie, not gonna lie. And for those of you who don't know, uh, the Dean is played by Jim Broadbent, who, uh, he is, uh, he is the, uh, chief of police. <laughs> He's the chief of police in Hot Fuzz. <laughs> a great movie. Oh yeah, it took me like the entire movie. Like I recognized the actor, yeah. but I just couldn't place him. And then you were like, "Hot Fuzz." I was like, "That's who it is." That's who it is. For <laughs> the greater good. For the greater good. Hot Fuzz is a great movie. Hot Fuzz is a dude. We need to do the Cornetto trilogy. Yeah, yeah. At some point, and get 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 Vampire Jekyll in on this. Probably. <laughs> it, he'd be all for it. It's I his think. fault we know about him. Right. <laughs> So anyway, so Indiana Jones is, you know, sitting at a sitting at a cafe and up and comes he's approached by a young greaser punk calling himself Mutt Williams. Yeah. Who mentions that his mom Played by him, Shia LaBeouf. Who mentions that his mom told him to go see Indy in case something happened to her. Well something happened to her. So Indy's friend, Harold Oxley, had apparently found a crystal skull in Peru, and then he was kidnapped. And uh, so was Mutt's mother. Yes. Yeah. Mary Williams. Mary Williams. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Stick a pain in that. Tink! 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 Yeah. <laughs> And Indiana Jones is like, Indiana Jones is like, all right, kid, listen up. Here's here, here's what we know about the crystal skulls. Some, Akator and Mexican legends, you know, something, 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 whatever. You know, oh, hey, Soviets are after us. Run. <laughs> oh, uh, not even Soviets. It's like, oh, hey, the FBI is here. I thought they were just Soviet I, agents. I thought it was, I'm pretty sure it's the FBI. Hold on. Anyway, oh, no, it is Soviets. Never mind. Ha! Okay. <laughs> Right. I mean, he, they could have been FBI, given that yes. they are dressed similarly, but it's definitely Soviets. Yeah, okay. So, for once, I actually got it right, as opposed to the Last Crusade, where I thought that, uh... Yeah. That one... <laughs> right. But, uh, yeah. So, they, so, so then we get a nice motorcycle car chase, and that's pretty cool. That's uh, it ultimately winds up in a library... And uh, in the aftermath of it, one of indie indie students asks Indy a question <laughs> after they've just had a motorcycle car chase into a library. <laughs> into a library full of people, by the way. And the student's like, uh, Dr. Jones, I have a question on... <laughs> you know, and Indiana Jones goes on some spiel like, you know... You know, you shouldn't just have your head in books, you know, it's all about the experiencing things, you know? You should go out and experience the world, you know? You know, the, maybe you'll find answers here. Also, your, the answers you're looking for is in page with something, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> As he rides off. <laughs> Remember, experience! <laughs> great, that's a great scene, too. I like that one. Uh, so then they go down to South America? <laughs> yeah, they go to... Yeah. They go. They go to the town where Oxley had uh, been uh, taken after his mental breakdown. Uh, they find his cell, which is just absolutely covered in etchings and clues and clues, and they basically uh, then use these clues to head to a crypt to try and find the remains of some conquistador. Franci Francisco de Orellana. Francisco. <laughs> Francisco de or Orellana. So they go to try and find his crypt, which nobody knows the location of, because his men just disappeared. Right. So they they end up having an encounter with some like gravekeepers that Indiana Jones fights and fights back, and you know Mutt's just like, "You're a teacher, part time." <laughs> that's another that's another classic scene in the movie. <laughs> so they find the crypt, and yet, yeah, admittedly, we're kind of rushing through things, but we kind of. Don't want to linger too much on this movie. <laughs> we start we'll, we start getting angry if we linger too long. <laughs> yeah, they, they find. This I mean, it's a, it's a decent action scene where Indy basically fights against the gra grave keepers. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but they find the crypt. They find a bunch of mummies. They open one up. There's there's a a guy in there who looked like he just died, and then he turns to dust. <laughs> yep. And re realize, oh, it's, it's the wrappings. That's what's doing it. Has no relevance for the rest of the movie. 
I mean, like, no, like, that doesn't even make fucking sense. Debatably, it could be like the same wrappings that the alien in the sarcophagus from the <sighs> earlier was. Maybe. But even then, it's not like it's relevant for the rest of the movie. So it's just kind of a thing. Then they find a mummy that's already been cut open and find the crystal skull in it. And it's not the same kind of crystal skull that Indy was more familiar with. It's it's an alien skull. It's a fucking alien skull. <laughs> it's an alien skull. And it's just like, oh, hey, an alien skull. Whoa. Never seen this before. Fuck off, Indy. So then they're captured. Okay, so I have a problem. So... Uh, one problem. <laughs> it's a pretty long, lengthy problem. So, from my understanding, Oxley found this crypt, got the crystal skull, took off with it to the place where he was supposed to take it, and then came back and put it back. Is is that is that what happened? Is that what Oxley did? Yes. Oxley what? went on the whole adventure that was yes. the majority so, of this movie hit on his own yes. and then backtracked. <laughs> yes. Well, no. See, what happened was... What happened was... And we'll, t we'll, we'll talk about this more, but what happened was he got there and he was given so much knowledge that he was like, yo, I gotta hide this and put it back. <laughs> Like he was he, literally right on the doorstep of. He was he was turned insane. Okay. I, I get that. I mean that was kind of relevant. But then, like right at the last step, before actually figuring anything out, he decides to turn out to turn around and go home. Yes. And then leave clues for Indy to find the crystal skull to basically retrace his own journey. It's like, okay, so this is a movie in which Indiana Jones is going on somebody else's adventure that they've already been on. Only with more people. <laughs> yes. Well, yes, but actually, no. I don't fucking know. That's... Yeah, this movie's dumb, yo. <laughs> so, um, they get their hands on the crystal skull and then wind up getting captured by the Soviets somehow. And it's here that we realize... Uh, it's here we see... We finally see Oxley and, uh... Played by John Hurt. <laughs> Played by John Hurt. Great, 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 great. We get great. Kate Blanchett basically explaining that the crystal skull was an alien skull because we've got an alien because there was an alien in the sarcophagus and here's here's its skull, but this skull isn't important. We need your skull. I mean, it does make sense at the end of it. It's just stupid. It's. This movie is dumber than a box of rocks, I tell you what. It's a f it's fun to watch, but when you actually think about the stuff that's happening, it's like, so incredibly dumb. Oh, uh, like, how do I put it? Like, if you turn your... Raider, Raiders of the Lost Ark made sense. You know, it had some linking logic to it. You know, some of it didn't particularly mesh well. Te Temple of Doom is... Completely dumb and doesn't make a lick of sense. But it was definitely mo made more to be an action movie than. But it was, de but it was definitely meant to be like, yeah, this is a dark action movie. Have fun with it. Yeah, <laughs> this movie just the plot kind of goes around in circles <laughs> and leads to a bunch of dead ends. That, ugh, ugh, it's dumb. Oh, and uh, we also uh, learn who uh, Mutt's mom is. Yeah, it's Marion. Marion Ravenwood. <laughs> Have fun with that. So yeah, uh, Indy and Marion are reunited, and turns out they almost got married, and then Indy left her at the altar. What a dick. So she got married, had Mutt, <laughs> except she was already pregnant with Mutt, <laughs> turns out. So and turns out Mutt is uh, Indy's son. Kind of a dick move, Marion. Henry Jones the <laughs> Third. Henry Jones the Third is the boy's real name. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> interesting. So yeah, so gotta deal with that too. In addition to everything else that's going on. Oh uh, no! But this actually, I will admit, it actually does lead to a really fun dynamic between between. <laughs> <laughs> oh right, because there's like one scene earlier. Don't where... call me dad. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't call me kid. Whatever, whatever it was. What was it? 
Oh, there there was a scene, uh, I think, aboard the plane where uh, Mutt mentions how he, he wants to become a mechanic. And his mom wants him to go to oh, school yeah, and learn, learn an education. And then he's like, don't let somebody else teach tell you how to how to live your life, so long as you're happy. And then as soon as Indy learns that he's his kid, it's like, you were going to become a mechanic? You should have gone to school. It's like... <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, admittedly, it's an intentional... Why didn't you finish school? It's it's admittedly an, an intentional reversal of Indio's own words to kind of uh, uh, <laughs> reflect the dynamic that has now suddenly changed. So it's yeah. actually more for humor than anything. That's... Uh... But yeah, <laughs> this see that's the problem with this movie. It hits in places and then it doesn't hit in others, and it misses more often than it hits. And it, and it becomes and it's so frustrating because it's like there, there's a there's a there's a good movie wanting to get out of this. You know, there it, is a there is a good movie behind all of this. It's just stuck behind buried. Circular, it's just it's just it's just buried behind circular logic <laughs> and stupidity. Yeah. So um, at one point, uh, Indy and Marion are trying to escape through the woods because... No, wait, wait, wait. I forgot to mention... No, wait, not yet. So... Uh, so Oxley's giving out riddles, you know. Indy doesn't know what's going on. Thanks to Mutt, they managed to uh, escape from the Soviets. Uh, also, um... Mac shows up again, and oh yeah, we forgot to mention. Here's a here's a weird point. Uh, so um, Mutt's really good at uh, uh, Mutt's really good at swordplay. Yeah, doesn't really come up a whole lot outside of the fact that the main villain uses a rapier for some reason. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's really only there to have the sword fighting scene later on, but whatever. Yeah. Mac shows Mac shows up again, working with the Soviets. Explaining that his ex his reasoning was that they had the money, um, but uh, also alludes to a previous adventure in what Berlin I think he says, yeah. which comes up later because he was trying to imply that to try and re remind Indy of their Berlin escapade in which they were double agents to try and hint that he's a double agent. But, it does not come across very well. No. It's, <laughs> It's like, it certainly doesn't come across to the audience who has no clue what was going on during that previous adventure. Right. And really would have only made sense for Indy. And he doesn't even remember what was all involved in that. So, it would have been clever if this were like, I don't know, maybe an allusion to maybe one of the adventures of young Indiana Jones, which I haven't seen any of those, so. Hey, I don't fucking know. <laughs> But, um, oh, I do, I do love <laughs> that there's a moment where Indy basically goes to Mac is like, as soon as I am able to, I will break your nose. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, there are numerous times where Indy has the opportunity to punch Mac in the face, and he takes it <laughs> every time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you know what? He's in the right, honestly. He's, he's in the right. Like, how fucking dare you? You know? How fucking dare you? Yeah, so, uh, thanks to Mutt, uh, Indy, Oxley, and Marion try to flee through the jungle. Marion and Indy get caught in some, not quicksand, but, uh, something, something similar. Uh, Mutt tells Oxley to go get help. <laughs> go find some help. Oh, they. Which he kind of does in a they, kind of crazy. They, what was it? They, they land in, like, they land in like a sand hole where like where like there's there's oxygenated air. Yeah, it's underneath. aerated sand. Yeah. So it's got like pockets of air underneath it and stepping on it has punctured some of the pockets to rise to the surface to aerate the aerate the soil and something like it, it that. makes sense scientifically. So Mutt comes back with a rope, tosses it to Mary, and she gets out, tosses the rope to Indy. Turns out it's not a rope. It's a python. <laughs> yeah. Which is like the only time that this element is brought up in this movie. His his fear of snakes. And then Marion's is like, just close your eyes and just, let's just call it a rope. <laughs> call, it, call, call, call it a rope for me. Just do it. Grab the rope, Indy. <laughs> so he grabs the rope, which um, 
clearly the guy's never played a Legend of Zelda game because rope is another name for a snake. Of course. <laughs> <And nose. laughs> Shut the fuck up. I hate it, it is! It I, fucking is! I know. It's so dumb. So they get out of the sand pocket and Oxley comes back with the help. The Soviets! Help! Help! Thanks, Oxley! Thanks, Ox. <laughs> Thanks, Ox. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta you gotta do it in you gotta you gotta do it in Harrison Ford's like deadpan. Thanks, Ox. <laughs> so the Soviets have Indy strapped down, and they're basically explaining their plan, which is to have because they know that Oxley stared too long into the eye sockets of the Crystal Skull that it drove him mad. They are going to have Indy look into the eye sockets of the Crystal Skull just long enough to make a connection and be able to understand what Oxley's insane ramblings. And so that's what happens. And then they uh, cut off just before he goes insane. Uh, at some point, uh, Mutt, Marion, Indy, and Ox manage to escape somehow. And I, I think it's because, uh, I don't, I don't fucking know. What a good thing. There's a chase, th there's a chase thing. Through this the is, this is where the movie gets just dumb, right? This, so, so yeah, they, they make it, they escape. There's a big chase scene. And like, in, uh, there's a, there's a scene where Indy and Marion have a heart to heart right in front of Mutt. And Mutt's just like, what the fuck is going on, guys? So then Indy hijacks, hijacks, uh, hijacks a vehicle and uh, we'd be in a big, big fucking chase scene here, and uh, eventually... It's, a, it's an entertaining chase scene for the most part. But eventually, 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 you know, you've got... We, get a, we get a nice uh, sword fight. We get a nice uh, nice sword fight between Mutt and Kate Irina. Kate Blanchett. And Irina. Kate Blanchett. What? Russian chick. Kate Blanchett. Fuck off. <laughs> but, uh, just either call her Irina or... Or, or, or. I'm going to call her Kate Blanchett because she's played by Kate Blanchett. And, and, that, and that's the only name I actually remember of hers. <laughs> I honestly do not remember her character's name. She had that little of an impact on me. <laughs> like, I remember her more for having played uh, the ancient one in uh, uh, Doctor Strange. And I haven't even seen that movie. <laughs> so, Kate Blanchett. <laughs> Whatever, fucking whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so we get all the principal actors: Mac, Oxley, uh, Indy, big Mar Soviet guy, Marion, no, Mar Marion and and Mutt on the same vehicle. And so, so then, Indy fucking decks Mac <laughs> right in the face. And he's like, "God damn it, Indy! I'm a turncoat. Fuck!" <laughs> Yeah, I know you're a turncoat. No, I mean I'm a turncoat against them. Don't you remember what we did in Berlin? God damn it! <laughs> I was trying to tell you I wasn't. I wasn't actually working for them. God damn it! <laughs> yeah. So it turns out that uh, that uh, yeah, Max actually a double agent. Whatever. Fucking whatever. Doesn't stop Indy from punching him. Yeah. As, as he deserves. But, uh, so eventually, so let's, just, let's just get right through this quickly. Uh, big sword fight, blah, 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 car chase, blah, 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 blah. Indy's fucking car goes over a cliff. They, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, the sword fight between Mutt and, uh, Kate Blanchett is actually, that, actually, actually, actually pretty good. Actually pretty good, because Mutt's, Mutt's standing between the two vehicles. And so he's, like, getting stretched by the legs and whatnot. So, basically, it's a sword fight between vehicles. Yes. It's, it's visually stunning. And we've got the jungle topiary right. coming, coming in and making its... And hitting, hitting mutton right in the balls every time. <laughs> and it's just like, poor guy. <laughs> poor guy. He's, he's sword fighting for his life. And he's also getting hit in the nuts both times. And he's still like, ah, fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> And then they encounter a giant anthill. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Well, so Indy gets into a fist fight with the big rush. This, the, this scene is the worst. This scene is the worst in the entire movie. Holy so, Indy gets into a fist fight with the big Soviet uh, leader guy whose name I couldn't be bothered to remember. Yeah, like, he, like there's a fucking he, name. He barely has a character. He his, his sole existence is to just be the big Soviet commander guy. And that's it. He lacks any character beyond that. 
And uh, he's the... kind of like um, that one Nazi character from La from Raiders. The third one. The guy whose head shrivels up. <laughs> Toad? No. <laughs> no, not Arnold Toad. Uh, la, 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 Dietrich. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The guy whose head shrivels up. <laughs> yep. Dietrich, Toad, and... Uh, and even that character's yeah. a more memorable character. At least, yeah, because at least that... You, you know what's memorable? Because at least that one's just like, I'm all business. I'm not here for this fucking nonsense. Let's just get this done. Let's go. This Soviet commander guy is literally just... He's just... I'm big and silent. Ah! Yeah, pretty much. The rock Fuck him. Yeah, but, yeah so... But, they, uh, they encountered so, giant ants. Giant, giant giant, soldier ants. By the way, those do not exist in South, uh, South America. Those actually exist in Africa. And uh, they are a fucking pest upon he, all of living kind. <laughs> Because let me let me explain soldier ants for you just real quick, for those who don't know, uh, army ants as they're called, soldier army ants. Uh, they don't live in nests, they live in hives. Like they just wander, they 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 live above ground, and just wander, eating everything that that they come across. They are a fucking be they. This will sound fucking terrible. They could devour a hu they can devour a human baby in like twenty minutes. Those things are fucking horrible. No, rant's done. No, I was just getting water. Oh, yeah. So those things are fucking horrible. And they come across these in South America. And look, look no, they don't. They do not exist in South America. Yeah, no. I I stepped away from the mic just to get water. He thought I was just leaving to wait for you to get done with your rant. No, I was just getting water. But uh. Yeah, so they encounter those, and Oxley is about to get, you know, devoured by them. And then he grab, puts down the crystal skull, and they just kind they of... They just part. Like, like, like Moses the, parting the fucking, Red Sea. Yeah, fucking Moses parting the Red Sea. Is just, oh, like, like the, the grace of swarm, God. Swarm around them, Indy, and the big Soviet guy. So Indy fucking decks the guy in the face, and he... He falls into the swarm of ants, and they... They engulf him. And... They engulf him and go into his nose and mouth, and it's like, Ugh. mind you, these aren't these aren't practical effects. These are fucking CGI ants, and they fucking look obvious as shit. So dumb. Admittedly, so dumb. Though, so dumb. Could so you dumb. Really get a practical effect for that going into the mouth? No. Hole? But why do it in the first place if it's gonna look horrible? It looked horrible. Anyway, so the guy's just like, yo! Meanwhile, Kate Blanchett is like on a log trying and to get honestly, up into a tree. I will, I will admit this. I will admit this. Getting dragged by a bunch of ants into their fucking giant nest is probably the worst way you could pop <laughs> fucking die. Because imagine, imagine you're dragged down into a giant hole by ants. God knows how deep. And the ants are, are, are still inside of you. And the ants are still inside of you, and they're beginning to eat you alive in the darkness. This is just like, this is just like that, oh man, this is, that, that honestly feels a bit like canoeing. I don't know if you know what that is. Nope. <laughs> so, uh, in ancient Greek, Greek, Greek mythology, there is a soldier who, uh, accidentally killed the king, and, uh, as punishment... He was, uh, he was, uh, shoved into, in between two canoes, which were tied closed, and, uh, fed, 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 fed milk and honey for days on end, without any way of getting out. Mm. 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 Yeah. Mm. For those of you who don't know, uh, milk and honey makes you shit. Mm. So, like, I, I, I didn't know that about that. But I kind of uh, figured it out just from the implication. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that's uh probably the uh, one of another worst way to die. Being ah, oh. See, yeah, Cape Blanchett is just kind of trying to avoid being t even touched by these things. Like, oh, these are gross. I'll get up on a log. They'll never get me. Oh crap! They're getting up on getting up on the log too. But, uh, so yeah, her Russian pals save her with the big truck. Uh, Indy and Co. get onto the vehicle, and they, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they, 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 uh, get to a cliff, 
And they're just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, Mary. And it's to- at this point that I realize. It's at this point that I understand why the vehicle that they decided to steal looked like it was a boat on wheels, because it's a boat on wheels. <laughs> yeah, fucking dumb. <laughs> It's like uh, throughout the entire period, I was like, "This just this vehicle looks like it's a boat, but with wheels." And then they uh, drive off a cliff into the into the Amazon River. I was like, "Oh, so that's why this vehicle looks like a boat with wheels, because it's a boat with wheels." And then they go Dog. over three waterfalls. Three, count them. One, one waterfall. Two, two waterfalls. Three! Three waterfalls! Ah, and then, ah, they, ah, then ah. they get to shore and just kind of brush themselves off. Yeah, they're fine. <laughs> yep. And then they figure out where they need to go because there's like one waterfall that looks like it's coming out of a face, which was one of Oxley's cryptic clues. So they go through there with Mac. And... Uh, I don't even remember what all happens during all this. So let's just skip ahead to the pyramid part. I think I think they make it through this cave, which has like a bunch of I don't know collapsing stairs or retracting stairs. I think. Yeah. To go through another corridor to get to this open field with a pyramid in it that is inhabited by natives, who only back off because Oxley has the crystal skull. <laughs> Um, th- this stuff looks visually fantastic, but it's not that exciting to just explain. <laughs> so, it, that, if that if that's why it seems like I'm kind of rushing through it, it's that. Like it it's a visual spectacle, but not that exciting to explain. But they get to the they get to the top of the pyramid, and they're like, "Okay, how do we get in?" <laughs> then Andy realizes that the face stones on the side aren't are supposed to be taken out to like remove the sand so that it opens up a huge thing, which is probably the most stupidly impractical ancient elaborate trap device in the entirety of this franchise. Are we, are we talking the sand thing? Yes, we yeah. are talking the sand thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that was kind of dumb. Oh, did we uh, did we talk about the 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 uh, the tribe? I briefly mentioned the tribe right, and how yeah, Oxley okay. just kind of holds up the skull and is like, oh, okay, get around. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we'll get back to them because uh, they uh, they don't last long. Yeah, no, because uh, as we soon learn, Mac has been dropping uh, tracking beacons, which Damn aren't it. even a thing, throughout the entire journey to help the Soviets, who he's still working for. Because turns out he's even more of an asshole than Indy thought in the first place. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's not actually a double agent. So basically, Mac has been leading the Soviets right along to follow up, which. Blech. Stupid, stupid, stupid. They basically gun down this entire tribe of people while Indy and the others are in the. are inside the pyramid. Which is just full of, like, gold and treasures and all that stuff from, like, all over the fucking world. Because, why the hell not? Yeah. And so they make their way into a chamber which has uh, alien skeletons. And it's at this point that they realize, oh, these are aliens! Oh, you mean these aliens with this alien skull are aliens? Whoa! You know, I had my suspicions back when Kate Cape Blanchett showed me that alien corpse, but I wasn't sure they were aliens until I got here and discovered they were aliens. Fuck this movie! Oh, yeah, Indy. These are aliens, even though I worked in the Roswell UFO like 10 years ago. Come on, man. Fucking come on. Like, this entire movie plot is hinged around the fact that these creatures are aliens. And you're just now figuring out that they're aliens. That's like that's like going through the entire Godzilla movie. And then Sarah Zawa's like, holy shit, there's a di- giant dinosaur. The hell? <laughs> you know what I think uh, is the problem? Hold on, give me a second here. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm trying to think. Hold on. Who? No, keep going. Uh, but yeah, so Kate Blanchett and the Soviets show up to uh, basically confront Indy once they're in the chamber. And they... Okay, you know what I think the problem is? This movie, um, I don't think this movie had uh, Lawrence Kasdan in it. I don't, I don't think this movie had Lawrence Kasdan in it. Oh, no. Uh, not him. He was the script writer for Raiders of the Lost Ark. Ah, <laughs> that, this would have made things a lot better. Probably. I think. Let me Maybe. look. <laughs> but that's just kind of an assumption. So, uh, Kate Blanchett confronts India and the others in the, uh, I don't know, I guess, Circle of Aliens room. The, the Hall of Aliens. Oh, and so they're like, okay, let's just let's just put the skull back. Kate Blanchett puts it back and is like, okay, I gave you your skull back. Now give me what I want, all of the knowledge, just all of it. Big, uh, big extra dimensional portal opens and up it's here, to return and it's, the and aliens and it's here that, back to their home. It's here that Oxley actually, you know, finally becomes sane again. He's like. <laughs> Oh yeah, no. This isn't. This isn't like an alien ship. This is like an interdimensional ship. It's like, oh, so Ox- interdimensional aliens. That makes it so much better. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so indeed, did, my- we, did we forget to mention that? Meanwhile, the entire time, Max just like, oh, no, 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 no. I was, I was oh, gonna no, get to that. I was no, gonna get to no, that. No, no, no. He's stealing all the priceless artifacts. <laughs> He's no, trying no, to no, make no. off with as much gold and shit. As he can carry, while all everybody else is actually trying to for, further the plot, as stupid as the plot is. So Kate Blanchett is getting all the knowledge of everything shoved into her brain because she she literally asked for it. <laughs> and the aliens, you know, they they, they will oblige. Okay. Indy and the others are just trying to get out. Max just going around grabbing stuff, trying yeah. to. Long story short, Mac dies. Mac dies. <laughs> like, it's like who cares. He's an asshole. <laughs> See you, Indy. See you on the other side. Wink and... Like, he, he accepts his death. Like, just, admittedly... I just okay, like, fair just, enough. Which is like, that doesn't feel... I any... mean, that doesn't, uh, you know, negate the fact that you were a huge asshole. No, I know, it just doesn't feel in character. No! No. <laughs> but whatever. It's whatever. Fuck this movie. <laughs> And, uh, so yeah, so then the Kate Blanchett's like, No! No! That's it's enough! too much information! Too much knowledge! Which, uh, what is that supposed to mean, huh? What's that supposed to mean, Steven Spielberg? Too much knowledge is bad for us? Fuck you. I'll be a genius if I want. I know a little, I will know literally everything about the universe and Earth before it. Especially where the location of the, uh, where the location of the everlasting gobstopper's secret formula is. I will, I will reap, I will reap the rewards of this. You know what else? You know what else I will use with that knowledge? I will discover the secret formula of Coca-Cola and Pepsi, and I will create my own brand of drinks. <laughs> the the secret knowledge, Coke and Pepsi are the same product. Dun, 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 dun. No! You know, you know how many people would be fucking pissed off at that? I would be pissed off at that. <laughs> like, oh, hey, guys. Because I, I objectively prefer Coke over Pepsi. I don't like either. I think both are trash. I mean, I will agree with that. I would definitely have any other soda over that. I'm pretty sure we've had this conversation. We have had this we conversation. We had this conversation last episode. <laughs> <laughs> Just like in Frankenstein! Just like in Frankenstein! <laughs> I'm glad that came back. <laughs> Thank you, good sir. You're welcome. Um, so anyway, Indy, Mutt, Ox, Marin, they all get out. Uh, India and Mutt basically refer to the, each other with their familiar pronouns now. And Ox is like, wait, what? Because uh, Oxley just now get, came back to lucidity. Right. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? <laughs> wait, you two? Oh, huh? fuck. <laughs> Did not expect this. John Hurt's great. 
<laughs> I, I I just watched him the other day uh, in uh, Harry Potter and uh, Sorcerer's... Re- rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, rest in peace. I saw him the other day. You know what? For the longest time, I did not realize John Hurt was in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone as Ollivanders. And, 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 and so I... I, f- I got the collection by mail. Like, I bought the collection because I, I used to have it. Well, a certain person used to have it, but I don't know that person anymore. I mean, you still know them. You're just, you know... I don't associate with them. But, uh... but that So then I bought it for myself, and I'm like, Alright, I'm gonna watch these movies in order again. And, uh, so I watched Sorcerer's Stone again. And I'm like, wait, huh, that's John Hurt. How come I never realized that? Interesting. John Hurt's in a lot of movies where it's like, oh hey, John Hurt, nice to see you, bud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like he's almost in like every popular movie there is, and it's just like, oh hey, John yeah. Hurt. <laughs> what do you know? That dude, that dude, like makes a living off of like big, small roles in big movies, and it's like that's amazing. So anyway, we get to the epilogue of the movie. We learn that Indy is now the new dean of the school, and he's finally gotten married to Marianne. And, um... Yeah. Mutt, Mutt picks up his head after it gets blown off Indy. Indy take, steals it away, and does. they don't say anything about it, unlike the rumors. It's the whole Mandela effect regarding that. Trust me. And uh, then the movie wait, ends. Wait, what, ha- what now? Oh, the... There's some rumors, like some people claim that they recall seeing a version of the movie where where Mutt's about to put the hat on and Andy grabs it away and says, like, not in a million years, kid, or something. Except that's not... I, I don't know. It's a whole that's, thing. No, it, that would have never happened. It's a happened. whole thing. It's a whole Mandela effect thing. No, that would have never happened. Yeah, no, it's a whole Mandela effect thing where people no. claim that they remember something... The Mandela effect now, is in, in now Harrison now Harrison Ford he 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 has in fact said that he he didn't like he didn't like Shia LaBeouf in this movie I'm pretty sure he has said that before he just he doesn't like the movie in general and they're making a new one fuck I just forgot for a second <laughs> I forgot that there's a new one coming out fuck <laughs> so yeah that was uh, Indiana Jones Kingdom of the Crystal Skull uh, a Decent action movie, but a really dumb story. <laughs> and that's mostly the problem with this movie. It's the, dumb. The plot is just stupid. <laughs> and just decides to just thrust aliens in into a franchise that had previously, as far as I'm aware, really only had like more religious and spiritual elements related to its actions. So it feels really out of place. <laughs> Um, I give it a six out of ten. Uh, yeah, six sounds about right, actually. Like it's not a, it's not a god awful movie. I have seen terrible. As movies. I mentioned earlier, there is a good movie trying to get out of this problem film. It's just that the problems are a bit too much for the. They're a bit too for apparent. the good movie to get through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I Shia LaBeouf just is Shia LaBeouf throughout this entire movie. He's fine. See, I like Shia. I like Shia LaBeouf a lot more than some people. I I, I don't hate the guy. It's just right. That... Uh, uh, people love him now, but I've always liked him. Like he was good in Holes. You know, he was in Holes, and that was a good movie, and he was actually really good in that. So I was like, I've always liked him because uh, off of that. You know. I've never had a problem with his acting, I guess. I, I, I guess just the the majority of the films that I've seen that he's been involved with, those being the first three Transformers movies, this, and his voice acting work in Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, it's basic, it basically just feels like it's the you same know, character. You, you literally bring that up all the time. <laughs> oh yeah, he's a, he's a voice actor in Nausicaa Valley of the Wind. I'm like, I don't give a shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he brings it up like every time we talk about Shia LaBeouf. He's like, oh yeah, he was in Nausicaa Valley of the Wind. I'm like, I know! You've told me like eight times! It's, it's, it's because I can't not hear his character and just immediately know that it's Shia LaBeouf and not think about that. Right. And he is like, honestly, the worst part of that movie. 
Or at least the English dub of it. Oh, man. And that's just because he doesn't really emote very well. <laughs> it is what it is. That's really the only reason. That and, you know, just the fact that he's even in that movie. Such, such a classic movie. And he's just there. <laughs> I mean, sure, Patrick Stewart's in there, too. But he plays a cool character in that. <laughs> Patrick Stewart's always good in whatever he does. This is a true fact. <laughs> That's well, not even opinion. That's fucking, just a fact. <laughs> he's fucking Seti. He's fucking Seti in Prince of Egypt. And he's amazing in that role. Even if it's just a small role. Dude, we should do Prince of Egypt sometime. That's I like, have it, so... Yeah, no, it's a great movie. Oh, I'm sure. Where do you got it? Oh, no, we'll find <laughs> out later. But yeah, that was, uh... Yeah, that was that. Uh, recommendations? You um, got any? I'm going to recommend a uh, 80s police comedy by the title of Police Squad. It is a very obscure series, and uh, unfortunately it was cancelled after only six episodes. And do you want to know why it was canceled after only six episodes? Because the because the studio thought that it was too funny. <laughs> the mo the series is just so jam packed with visual and uh, audio gags that the that they thought that the American people would be too overwhelmed with the comedy to appreciate it. But thankfully, the uh, three guys who worked on it, Abrams, Zucker, Abrams, did manage to uh, bring this to the to the world stage by making not one, not two, but three movies based on the series. Let me guess, Police Academy? No. Oh. The Naked Gun. Oh. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense now. <laughs> Complete with the actor who originally appeared in Police Squad, Leslie Nielsen. You know, Leslie Nielsen's a great uh, deadpan. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, how do I put this? Leslie Nielsen's probably one of the best straight men in all of acting. Yes. <laughs> and he's not even like a straight man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, fun fact, his first comedic role was in Airplane, and previous to that, he'd only been in dramatic roles. Yeah, and yeah. And he, he really loved the fact that he could be in a comedic role, which ended up redefining his entire career from that Yeah, point so, on. yeah, that, that, yeah, that's, that's the, the interesting thing. Le Leslie Nielsen, you know, was known as, like, this, this uh, very good dramatic actor, and then he did Airplane, and everyone's like, oh, he's a pretty good comedian. Let's, let's, let's beat the fucking dead horse on him for decades afterwards. By giving him nothing but comedic roles and nothing serious. You know what? I want to see a Leslie Nielsen serious role. Just well, it's a little too late for a that. A little too late for that. Yeah. But yeah, no, he killed it in Police Squad and the Naked Gun trilogies. Check check the show out. Check the movies out. The show... Thanks, if, if Revan. You, if you've ever seen any of the Naked Gun movies, the show has just the same amount of sla of humor as that. Both deadpan, visual, audio. Oh, it's so fantastic. And it's a great movie. I actually uh, picked it up about two years ago now. Great series, would recommend. Oh, de definitely. Uh, I, I really only bring it up, bring up the fact that I picked it up like two years ago now because, well, I picked it up the same day that, um, well, you remember what happened two years ago just before Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Long story short. Uh, should we tell? Nah, I don't know. I think we may have even mentioned it. I think we've mentioned it. Our dad had a our dad had a stroke. Uh, he's fine. He's he made fine. a full recovery. We were incredibly lucky. Had a stroke right before Thanksgiving, and we're like, just the day before. And we're just like, gee, Dad, you couldn't you couldn't have waited until Christmas. No, none of us said that. Not a single one of us no. said that. We only say that in retrospect. Uh... <laughs> Dad, I love you. <laughs> if you hear this, I love you. He doesn't. I don't think he gives a shit either way. <laughs> he's just like whatever. You know, he's kind of like, yeah, he's kind of like Harrison Ford. I don't give a shit. <laughs> but yeah, so it's Thanksgiving. Figured I'd talk about a show that I finally was able to start watching around Thanksgiving due to, admittedly, due to a traumatic event, but one which has thankfully uh, not been as traumatic as it could have been. <laughs> 
Yeah. And the show is just really good. <laughs> So what are your recommendations? I don't, I, you know, I don't really have a recommendation. That's weird. I, no, no, I, I don't have one. Okay. Yeah. I, I haven't been able to think of any. I mean, maybe Harry Potter, but everybody's, everybody who's ever, that one's not even like a recommendation. That's just like a, oh, everybody's seen Harry Potter. Except, except you, because you don't really care for the series. Yeah. You, I, you, you, I, I read through the first four books. Yeah. I have all seven of them, and I just yeah, never you got bothered to, to actually finish You You got the Goblet of Fire, and you're just like, you know what? I, that's a fair take. You, you know, you get the Goblet of Fire, and then you're like, all right, that's, I'm done. I don't need to see the, see the rest. Well, to, in, in my defense, I read Goblet of Fire when it was new. So yes. I just ended that, up getting the books that later came on. Out, that came that came out when? What, 2004? Maybe. But yeah, that was just the most recent book, and I just kind of lost interest in the series after that for some reason. Like, I, if, if I had the other books available to me at the time, I probably would have read them, but I probably wouldn't have watched the movies. I would have stuck to the books. Right. Hold on. So yeah, your recommendation is Harry Potter. I've already got oh, that up. Oh, 2000. Oh, oh shit. Really? Yeah. Well, did, well, that, yeah. Okay, okay, I guess that was around the time that the early, first movies were starting to come Yeah, out. the first movie, Sorcerer's Stone, came out in, like, 01. So, yeah. Is, is it weird that I kind of have all this context for this, surrounded by this also being the first time that Dragon Ball was airing in the U.S., probably? Yeah. <laughs> Nin, 90, <laughs> well, Dragon Ball Z, what, came out in 96 in the U.S.? I'm talking Dragon Ball specifically. Oh, Dragon Ball 1. Oh, yeah, that was definitely around 2009. <laughs> yeah. 99-2000. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about the good Dragon Ball. Not, not saying Dragon Ball Z is bad, but Dragon Ball is better. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I will fight you with a power pull over that. What, Dragon Ball is better than Z? Yes. <laughs> Eh, it's a preference, you know. If you prefer, com if you prefer comedy and actual martial arts, then yeah, I'd, I'd say you'd probably prefer Dragon Ball. But if you, if you like the story and character development, then yeah, I'd suppose Z is better. It just really depends on what you're looking for. But yeah, no, we'll talk more about Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z at some other time. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't want to. I don't really want to do the movies. I'm not saying that we would. <laughs> no, I, I get that. I mean, like, I've already asked you if you want to do the movies, and you've already said no. Nah, so no, I was thinking like more like maybe a further down the line recommendation. Maybe, <laughs> and then yeah. we just kind of get caught in, up in that. So right, or maybe just like a podcast talking specifically about Dragon Ball as kind of a whole. <laughs> So, Which, yeah, so that, those to... are our recommendations. Uh, getting on uh, another another small topic, uh, getting on the topic of uh, Survivor Series. Survivor Series has come and gone, and uh, neither of us watched it. The only, the most I watched of it was literally the ending with uh, the, end, uh, the Undertaker. The Undertaker's final farewell. That was literally the only part Good send-off. Good send-off. Yes. Hologram yes. of Paul Bear was nice. Mm -hmm. But, uh... But uh, there's a few problems with the results I have that I don't fucking agree with. That's fine. Go on, complain. I'm going to get more water. Yeah, you uh. fucking do that. Uh, so, what the fuck is the point? No, you, you want to talk about a fucking god-awful match here. A fucking god-awful dirt shit match. Bearing in mind that he hasn't watched any of the matches. I haven't watched any of the match. I'm going off of results only. But you want to talk about a god-awful dirt shit match. Team Raw, Nia Jax, fucking terrible wrestler. She needs to go. Shayna Baszler, she's fucking boring. Lana, she is the worst wrestler in the company by a country fucking mile. Lacey Evans, good wrestler, a bit green. Could use a little more development. Peyton Royce. She's a tag team. She's a tag team wrestler. She should, she should be with Billy Kay. I don't know why they split them up. Fuck you, WWE. Right, versus Team SmackDown. Bianca Belair. Pretty good. P pretty good. Ruby Riot. Okay, wrestler. Liv Morgan. Okay, wrestler. Bailey. She's probably the best wrestler in this match. I'll tell you that. 
Uh, and Natalia, the second worst wrestler in the entire fucking company. Jesus Christ, what uh, what the fuck is this, WWE? Bearing in mind, he hasn't actually seen the match. I haven't seen the match. And Lana wins! Yeah. Why? <laughs> Why do you do this? What's the fucking point? What? Lana's not winning the championship anytime soon. She's not... She's not a good wrestler. She literally... I think she had a title match just... Just as she's not Sunday. win, she's not winning the title. She though. didn't win it, no. But that was because Nia Jackson, Shayna Baszler came in and interrupted the thing. Now Roman Reigns, and then Lana and Oscar won. <laughs> now Roman <laughs> Reigns, matches. now Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. That one actually sounds like it'd be a pretty good match. I watched the WrestleMania match last year, and that was actually pretty all right. I think, uh, I think, I think it probably this this one was probably going to be better with. Uh, with heel Roman and face Drew. I think that one actually, it actually might be a little bit better. But, uh, Sasha Banks versus Asuka. She beat Asuka. I, I'm very angry about that because I like Asuka. She is, uh, don't know if I've, I don't know if anybody knows, but, uh, Asuka is my favorite female wrestler in the world today. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you, what do you mean? I was just, are you so, you, it's so obvious. You call, you call me a simp? Yes. Damn it. <laughs> no, Oscar's great. She's amazing. Uh, Bobby Lashley defeated Sami Zayn. I'm angry. I am very angry about that. There is zero reason for Bobby Lashley to be beating anybody because he's a fucking boring geek. Even if he has MVP talking for him. Whatever. Street Profits def defeated New Day. No objection to that. I think that's a pretty alright result, no matter. I mean, you're winning regardless with that match. I bet that one's going to be pretty good. Uh, AJ Styles, Keith Lee, Sheamus, Braun Strowman, and Riddle, otherwise known as Matt Riddle, as he should be fucking called, uh, swept. Swept. Team SmackDown. Just fucking entirely swept them. Uh, Kevin Owens, Jey Uso, King Corbin, Seth Rollins, and Otis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I kind of feel bad for Otis. I mean, his his buddy betrayed him, and then he got left alone on SmackDown. <laughs> so dumb. And then it's like I I, uh, I feel bad for Otis because I no longer watch his stuff, and he was like the the only, the last good thing about SmackDown following the draft. <laughs> And it wasn't enough for me to keep paying attention. And uh, the dual brand Battle Royal 18-man The Miz won by last eliminating Dominic Mysterio. It's official, folks. Dominic Mysterio is officially a wrestler. He's been officially a wrestler for a while now. Hey, I will fucking throw this bottle at you. No. No, Daddy, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was Survivor Series. Uh... Speaking of wrestling as well, I have begun a uh, begun a new uh, review series on the local website that will, should be coming out within a few weeks. It is uh, beginning in uh, October of 1990, October 14th, 1996. Uh, the week before Bret Hart comes back and the final show before In Your House Buried Alive. And uh, I will be going through going through that and hopefully getting all the way to uh getting all the way to 19 uh, uh, getting all the way to October 1999 before I switch over to WCW for the remainder because uh WCW gets fucking horrible and uh I need I need to see it with my own eyes just how bad it gets <laughs> So yeah that's uh that's something to look forward to uh, I guess yeah I I think we uh, ran a little long because you decided to rant about WWE. Yeah. So um, let's uh, bring this to a close. Fuck, it's only 1.45. Holy shit. What a Thanksgiving this has been. Yeah. I'm going back for pumpkin pie, by the way. Mm -mm -mm. Go I know. It, I know you don't like pumpkin. I, I never said that. Don't lie. You I like the taste of pumpkin. I'm just not a pie fan. I'm just not a big fan of pie. He prefers poontang pie. <laughs> I'm kidding. I didn't correct you. He had that look on his face like, I'm gonna fucking murder you. <laughs> but, you fucking asshole. 
Ready? How dare you tell my secret? <laughs> How dare you reveal it like that? <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, this has been Proto Balls Talk. I'm Proto Met. This is my Recycle Balls. Bye. Bye. Have a wonderful time. <laughs>